What's up, Riverhawk fans? Welcome back to this week's edition of the Riverhawk Report. My name is Ben Nahn. I hope everyone had a wonderful homecoming. We had a whole jam-packed slave of games all over the place. So let's take a look back at everything that happened in Riverhawk Nation this past week. Let's get started with No Nonsense. On Thursday, Rachel Morier scored two goals to power the women's soccer team past UMBC 2-0. And on Sunday, in what was a memorable senior day from Cushing Field, Morier registered her ninth goal of the season. Solid goaltending and phenomenal defense helped push the Riverhawks to a 1-1 draw with a talented Bingham, Binghamton team. At 5-5-5, five, 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 they hit the road for their final two games of the season, fighting for a playoff berth. Thursday, they traveled to Durham, New Hampshire to take on UNH and on Sunday to challenge Maine. The men's hockey team welcomed Nebraska Omaha to the Song is Center this past weekend and registered their first win of the season. Omaha took the first game on Friday by a score of 4-2, but Norm Bazin's squad rebounded with a 5-2 victory on Saturday in front of a raucous homecoming crowd. Corey Evingson scored his first collegiate goal and Christopher Hernberg made 24 saves to lead the Riverhawks. They challenged the New York to challenge ECAC foes in Clarkson on Friday and St. Louis on Saturday night. Turning to Wicked Blue Field now, the field hockey team on Sunday celebrated past NCAA championship teams from 2010 and 2005 as both were in attendance. Earlier that week, Friday, they took on Vermont up in Burlington and escaped with a 4-2 victory. On Sunday though, the nationally ranked UAlbany Great Danes got revenge against the Riverhawks with a 4-2 victory. Sophie Garrels did register her sixth goal of the season in the loss. Now at 8-8 eight eight overall, they look to push for playoff positioning on the road with big games against Maine on Friday and New Hampshire on Sunday. On Wednesday, the men's soccer team fended off UMBC with a 3-2 victory led by Dario Jovanowski's second goal of the season. On Saturday, the Riverhawks fell short to Vermont by a score of 2-1. At 6-5-1, it is crunch time as they finish their road trip at Binghamton Saturday and Brown next Tuesday. The volleyball team showed signs of resilience still looking for their first conference win of the season when they welcomed Hartford on Friday night at Costello. In what proved to be one of the more exciting matches in all of America East this season, the Riverhawks fell 16-14 in the final set to lose the five-set thriller. Looking to bounce back on Sunday afternoon, they fell to a overpowering UMBC team but had moments that showed many that this team is trending upward. Friday they hit the road to take on New Hampshire, who they went the distance with in their previous meeting. It was a race to gain experience. Both the men's and women's cross country teams were back at it when they turned in some solid performances and learned some valuable lessons Saturday morning at the Adidas pre-national meet in Tom Sawyer Park in Louisville, Kentucky. Coach Gary Gardner alluded to the fact that for the men, it was their first championship race and that there is a lot of work to do. Paul Hogan did finish 39th in what proved to be his fastest race of his career, finishing with a time of 23 minutes and 49 seconds. On the women's side, Allie Morris was the first River Hawk to cross the line at 138th place out of almost nearly 300 runners. Both teams returned to action on Friday, October 20th at the Central Connecticut Mini Meet at Stanley Quarter Park in New Britain, Connecticut. Let's now take some time to look at your Circle Health Plays of the Week. Number three on the ice, the Riverhawks taking on the Mavericks and Nebraska Omar. Kenny Hauszinger with a shifty move there to find it short side. Week after week, this guy showing how good he is. Look at that. Number two, we go to Cushing Field on senior night. Julia Schneider with some ups there. Look at this. Fingertips deflecting that one to preserve the 1-1 one, one draw. And the number one play of the week. We go back on the ice, a pivotal moment. Riverhawks up 3-2, Christopher Hernberg. Full extension with the toes. Take a look at this save. So close and it keeps it out. And those are your circle health plays of the week. I hope everyone had a fantastic homecoming weekend and with an off week, be sure to go to GoRiverHawks.com so you can check out the latest schedule for next week. On behalf of the Riverhawk Network, I'm Ben Nahn. Have a great week, everyone.